Kharteng police are still searching for an unknown number of suspects following a spate of alleged gang-related shootings, which have left five people dead in Westbury and El Dorado Park. And, of course, gun violence is the big issue in these areas. On Friday, four people were shot and killed in Westbury. One person was shot dead in El Dorado Park. Circumstances surrounding the incidents are still unknown at this stage. For more, we cross to SABC News reporter Nozin Tombi Mia. Uh, afternoon to you, Nozin Tombi. What are people saying on the ground? Thank you so much, uh, Francis. You know, we are still standing here in Extension 5 in El Dorado Park. And, you know, since the last time we spoke, a lot more community members have, have come to where we are to speak to us, to share some of their stories of um, the, the, the brutality of the gang violence and the criminality that we're seeing. And the stories are really harrowing, Francis. And again, you know, it, it does raise the issue of the police. And it's, it's, it's very important what you said in the introduction, that they are investigating. It's not like there's no work being done. There is work being done by the police. But the problem is that in as much as there is work that's being done, how effective is that work? And I'm going to bring in here one of the community members here, Feroza patient, Patience, who's also been a very, very, very active member of the community, who's been dealing with the issue of the gangs, of the criminality in El Dorado Park for quite a while. On Saturday, Feroza, what happened? with these kids? You know, I can't say, but right where I lived, I just heard a whole lot of gunshots. It was so sad and so bad that our kids are now so traumatized and seeing that this is what our kids have to, to, to live with, um, the gun violence, um, many other ills within our community, not only the gun violence yeah. and gangsterism. gangsterism. And Feroza, you know, we spoke about that. So let's unpack it. Let's unpack this issue. When you were here, you came to El Dorado Park when you were quite young. Tell me, what was El Dorado Park like? You know, I was seven years old. El Dorado Park just started um, extension to Snowberg Street. Um, I've seen El Dorado Park developing into this beautiful community. And today what I see, what I know, what El Dorado Park was then, is very very sad uh, there's been no development for our kids our kids are without jobs um, there's no centers for them to go and keep themselves busy so they revert to 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 to, to drugs uh, prostitution they they rob they steal and many of them head an household you know they've been taken care by grannies grandmothers um, grandfathers, even their mums and dads who are without jobs. So they basically need to feed this family. So what way they think, where do we go to, to get money just for a loaf of bread? And this is what is happening in our community at the moment. And this breaks me because our kids are, are so limited with resources, education, jobs, and they need to be a change they, somehow or the other. And I'm just so happy that Action SA has now seen this and wanting to take action to make this community a better community for our kids. One of the issues that came out was around, or, uh, as around a lack of sufficient participation by authorities, by other political parties. What do you think is a stumbling block there and, and how do you think stakeholders can come to the party and really start bringing change to this community? You know, I think when it comes to that, they should put the, the, the political affiliations aside and come together as a community to make this community better. That, was, that is what we need. Stakeholders, political parties, join hands and just make things happen in El Dorado Park. More so not, even El, not only in El Dorado Park, but our other coloured areas as well. So, yes, we drastically, drastically need change. You know, off camera, you said something so interesting to me about um, these kids uh, being the breadwinners sometimes. And I asked you the question about NASFAS. Why are these kids who are finished matric not going to look for NASFAS or bursaries or any of those opportunities? What are the stumbling blocks that they're dealing with there? 
you know our kids do try but remember there's only a certain amount of kids that can qualify or that they choose from and like it was mentioned earlier it's more in the rural areas than within our communities and that is one of the issues one of the problems we're facing so for a practical example for let's say the president is watching this right now what message would you say to the president to get him to understand the crux of the problem and how to help this community and not just this community you said it so well it's so many other colored black poor communities um, my word to the president today is please we need change we need change for our young people we need change for for our teenagers our kids at school matriculants will be roaming the streets next year um, kids that have passed like few years ago still haven't had any jobs n nothing has come you know they'll apply for something please we need change we need change in all our communities our communities are suffering and not only like i said not only el dorado park many other communities are suffering you know we're standing outside the el dorado police station because it's it's the safest place that we could have this broadcast here the community doesn't feel safe has there been any community action that's helped yield any results have the community taken to the streets or sent petitions or sent anything to show that they need assistance has the community done any of that look the community has tried a uh, memorandum was handed over here at the police station and you know uh, police presence would only be for a certain period and then nothing else um, we understand that um, there's limited resources but again we need more resources within our communities um, more police presence um, and I think that is one of the biggest problems we also have within our community. If these killings are happening in broad daylight, how would visible policing assist? You know, there are many um, areas where they know these um, shootings are happening. So with their presence there, I think that would help a lot. It definitely would. As a respected member of the community, what, a, what, what message do you have to these young kids that are watching us here today and are possibly watching TV who are falling prey to the traps of gangsterism, prostitution, crime? What message do you have for them as a community member who's seen the, the devastating impact it's had on families? My message to our teenagers um, is hang in there. Don't do what is not needed to do. We know that you are suffering out there. Yeah. We know your passion um, for your community as well. Yeah. But please just have patience. Change is going to come. Change needs to come. 2024, we'll see. Change is definitely going to come. Thank no, we, you. We're going to yeah. leave it right there. Thank you so much, Rosa. Change is going to come. And you know, Francis, this is what the communities here are, are, are calling for and they're asking for. They're asking for change to happen. I mean, you can see here, this is a community that is going about their day. I mean, the kids are just coming back from school. The taxis are ferrying uh, community members to and from their destination. This is a community that's looking for hope. It's a community that's looking for help. And it's a community that says that they no longer will be tolerating the gangsterism, the violence, the criminality. And they're willing to work with the police, they're willing to work with authorities. But as Feroza said, a lack of resources becomes a problem. And the kids stay idle, they fall prey to the gangs, to the criminality. Some of them are breadwinners. Some of them are just trying to find enough money to get one loaf of bread to feed their family for that day and they find themselves entrapped because there's no opportunities. You know, Francis, as I hand back to you, it's not just El Dorado Park. It's poor communities, it's poor townships, it's squatter camps where the young children are vulnerable, they're poor, and they have no opportunities. And it's an issue that is going to continue up until more interventions are put in place, systems, processes, first line of, of defense, by the police to try and make the community feel safe 
and to encourage these kids to do more and aspire more than just becoming a gang member affiliate or a criminal or going into prostitution, to give them hope to be able to do something with their lives.